Traditionally, classrooms look like this, but some of them have started looking more like this, thanks to a method called design thinking, which uses empathy and collaboration to solve problems. A few classes at BVN have started using this method. Here's why. Over time, I realized that the projects and the activities that my kids were doing in economics were important to me, but didn't necessarily have any real world value to the kids. So um, all the projects that we'd done, the project was sort of the end. Right? It was the thing that you did and you got graded them based upon this project, but there wasn't any real life application. Uh, so I spent the summer at like a CAPS Institute, uh, working with Scott Kreschel, who is head of the CAPS sort of innovation lab, employing that concept that the class should actually be related to real world economics. And then so together we sort of began to kind of create the process. Could we create something uh, at Blue Valley North that gave students who don't typically benefit from North time something to help them feel more inclusive and benefit the community as a whole. So it turned out to be uh, kids in room 602, so high level special education kids who don't have the same curricular needs as typical kids, but they have an hour in the day that we would love to make them feel more a part of the student body and then provide a service to the student body, which helps with those kids in the special ed learn life skills and job skills and, um, and then actually make a foster a sense of community. So we started with empathy and we had to think about the needs of other students. We had to think of what could possibly benefit the school and then from there we branched off to, okay, so we have these needs, how can we fulfill these needs? And we just kind of expounded on that and like refined it into our current idea. We are setting up a program that gets the SPED kids involved with everyone in BVN and our idea was to do a community service type project where we provide necessities to underprivileged kids in the Blue Valley North Feeder Schools. As media and advertising, we had to sort of come up with a brand for our project, so we designed a logo and a name. And the name for our project was The Full Family because foals are baby horses and the mascot for Blue Valley North is the Mustang. So because it's our feeder schools, these are baby Mustangs. Um, I think for the most part, the majority of kids were a little hesitant at first. I think most kids like it. But, um, you know, the problem is that education is sort of given you these parameters, right? We teach, you learn, you get points, you're sort of chicken scratched your way to being educated. And it's our fault, right? We give you a rubric, you only do what the rubric tells you. So some kids are so used to that, that in real design thinking, it can be gray, right? The kids decide what the project is, the kids decide how to implement it, the kids decide where to go with it, and there aren't all that many points attached to it. So there are some kids who are kind of resistant only because it's so not the norm for them. I like that we're not doing lectures all the time, like in other classes where it's pretty much every day is the same thing. You take notes and the bell rings and you go do your homework, but for this class we like do something different every day and it's just kind of a different hour of the day in the monotony of like my other classes. My name is Anna Boda and I am a co-president of the Mustang Community Service Club. And I'm Brashe Boyd, and I'm the other co-president of the Mustang Community Service Club. One of our biggest drives that we try to hold each year is Giving the Basics. And basically, it's this organization that provides a lot of necessities that aren't offered by uh, the government to low-income families. So like deodorant and soap and toothpaste and all these things that are actually like really important to live hygienically. And we try to hold a drive to donate um, just those necessities to that organization and they help give to like schools in the area for like students who don't have those items that they need. We will usually have barrels outside of the library or at the front doors where you can donate. Um, we also work with Johnson County Christmas Bureau so we'll send volunteers over there and 
They usually enjoy donations of toys and coats and other things. If you would want to be a member of our community service club, we are totally open to that and through there we do have signups. I mean, we've been doing we've been doing this for years now, and then when suddenly, like all these national like news organizations are posting about the work you're doing, it's absolutely mind blowing, and it just built and built and built, and then by the time that we had the most retweeted tweet ever be about our chicken nuggets, like that still doesn't seem real. J'ai commencé la classe de français quand j'avais 13 ans. Uh, donde vivo, en España, hablamos español, pero también hablamos otro idioma. Pero mi primera lengua de otro país es el inglés y es obligatorio desde tercer grado. Justo al Arabia, fui al Maghreb, fui al Solf. Uh, o a Drusso, al Arabia, al An, um, a Irán. و في المغرب كنت في في الرباط مع أسرتي مغربية وأنا أتكلم بالدرجة كثيرا والفصة قليلا لأن أنا كنت في المغرب وفي المغرب هم يتكلمون بال دارجة كثيرا و لا الفصة و أنا أنا أتكلم بالعربية كل يوم في مدرستي مع عائلتي العربية و في بيتي donc, quand on parle la langue et on voyage ou on habite dans un pays, la différence, c'est qu'on est plus connecté avec les personnes de la ville. Il y a beaucoup de cultures et de pays dans le monde. Et si tu parles ton idioma et visites un autre pays ou vives dans un autre pays, tu n'as pas accès à toute la perspective. Que tienen las personas. Je, peux, je peux vous dire que il y avait des moments quand j'ai trouvé « Wow, vraiment j'ai compris, vraiment j'ai réussi ». Et ça arrive souvent après trois ans et après cinq ans. Oui. Les premières deux années, c'est un peu… on ne peut pas dire beaucoup, mais après la troisième année, on a un peu l'idée « Wow, je parle, je peux, je peux communiquer un peu ». Et quand on finit la classe de quatrième ou cinquième année, vraiment, on a une idée que je peux réussir, je peux communiquer, je peux avoir toutes mes expériences, mais dans une autre langue. Yo tuve dos compañeros de la Universidad de, de Kansas, KU, y empezamos a hablar todos los días en el apartamento en inglés, y es cuando Empecé a, a, a pensar, no cosas de clase, pero mis cosas en, en otro idioma. Si vous voulez aller à une université qui est vraiment sélective, une langue, c'est quelque chose qui vous met à part des autres personnes qui font la demande. I guess what's most important about learning these languages and what has made me realize that I want to keep learning language and improving the languages that I have the foundations in the, is the rewarding feeling that I get from just connecting with people, whether it's through helping them or just becoming their friend or making connections that I can keep for a lifetime.